can you all hear me? What? Yeah. <laughs> what? Now you can. Okay, hey, I have great news for you. You own something that is so valuable that even if I offered you a million dollars for it, you wouldn't sell it to me. In fact, I think you own something that is so valuable that even if I offered you $10 million for it, you wouldn't offer sell it to me. You'd turn me down. Even if I went to $100 million, I don't think you would have taken me up on my offer. Do you know what it is that you own that is more valuable than $100 million? Do you want to have a go? My dignity. Dignity. <laughs> hey, that's a good answer. But beyond dignity, you have a future. And even if I gave you all the money in the world in exchange for your future, would you do it? No. Why not? Because if you didn't have a future, game over, right? So when you don't have a future, life's not good. But because you do, anything is possible for you. But there might be someone here today who even thinking about their future might feel like you haven't quite achieved the results that you've been working towards. You might be hearing the chatter of mediocrity in your ear every day. You might be growing weary, holding up a shield of what some days feels like you're fighting a losing battle. Or you might be feeling like you're hanging onto the arms of a clock, desperately trying to slow down time. Or desperately trying to block out the criticism from the people around you. Or you might be scanning your horizon, scanning, looking, looking for glimmers of hope to know that your future is secure. If that is you, there is hope. Why? Because you have a future. You have a future and as long as you have a future, absolutely anything is possible. Anything is possible. Now, when I use the word hope and future, I don't have the, like the fuzzy, wuzzy kind of words, you know. What I mean is, and what I'm referring to is this reality. You, one life, one hope, one future. This is your life. This is your future. You have one go at it. But anything is possible. And so what I'd like to share with you today is how you can take hold of your future, the most valuable thing you own apart from your dignity. <laughs> how you can hang on to your future and use it and make the very best of the opportunity that you have. How you can create a life free from fear, free from criticism, free from failure, free from rejection. How you can create a life that you would love to live. Is anyone in the market for that kind of information? Who has a vision for their future? Excellent. Who's a little bit apprehensive in considering, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? <laughs> Wonderful. Who's got that mix of fear and anticipation and excitement? Do you know that feeling, that little butterfly feeling in, the, in, the, in your tummy? Excellent. Well, that's what I want to set out for you today. I want to show you how you can board the train, the fast train of change that heads to your future success. But before I do that, I just want to kind of tell you a little bit about my story so that you feel like you know me a bit better and so that you know why I'm so passionate about helping people succeed. So I realized really early on in my late teens that helping people makes my heart sing. So I am, like many of you, embarked on a career by going to uni. And my, my choice was to study psychology. 
So I hold an honours degree in psychology, and like many of you, I'm sure I held a part-time job while I um, put myself through uni, and uh, my part-time job was selling removalist services. Does anyone have a selling job? Yeah, I had a selling job. So I would market and sell this remove, uh, services of a removalist company and then just hand the actual packing and moving over to them because you can tell why, yes? <laughs> Not that strong. Anyway, so it was in my final year of psychology that I made my very first observation, my own observation, about human behaviour. So obviously I learnt a lot in studying, but I made this observation, and they didn't teach me this in psychology, I don't know if they teach it here, but what I, my observation was this. The absence of depression, anxiety, and other challenges does absolutely not guarantee the presence of happiness and success. Have you seen that? The absence of challenges does not guarantee the presence of happiness, thriving, successful life. And so I found myself, after many years at uni, looking at this going, oh my goodness, conventional psychology is all about moving people from this place, struggling, challenges, to this kind of middle place where you're not unhappy, but you're definitely not thriving. You're not struggling, but you're not succeeding. And so... I thought, oh, I feel like I'm driven to help people go from this middle place to this happy, successful and thriving place. And so instead of pursuing a career in psychology, I made a drastic decision. Who's ever made a drastic decision? Okay, here's my, here was my drastic... So picture this, I'm in my early 20s, I've absolutely no idea about business, so I decide, I know what I'll do, I'll go into business. And because I had no idea of, about anything in manufacturing, I thought I'd go into a manufacturing business. <laughs> how, how hard can that be? And so I designed this handbag from recyclable material. In fact, I was standing in my kitchen one day looking at the bag that the vegetables come in. I'm like, oh, that's actually a cool bag. I can do something with that. So I designed a handbag around the vegetable bag. Yeah. And... <laughs> I set out to uh, make, do this business. So I employed ladies from my um, local community in South Africa, where I'm originally from, and we made manufactured handbags and we sold these handbags. And lo and behold, something amazing happened. I won a national design competition with a design of a handbag made from vegetable bags. <laughs> Honestly. And the prize was a trip to Paris. Wow, my husband was happy. <laughs> so happy. Anyway, so we pack our bags, we get on the plane, we fly 14 hours, we get off the plane. We'd never, ever been outside of South Africa. Who's travelled abroad? You know that feeling you get. When you get off the plane, you're in an airport where they don't speak English. Has anyone had that experience? You're like, oh my goodness, it's true. There's a world out there. And it's not the one I'm used to. Everything they taught me in geography is true. I had to go and check whether that was really true. It is. So we had our trip to Paris, had our couple of weeks there. And while we were away, my husband and I made this decision. We thought, we're young, we're independent, we're, let's travel the world, as you do. And so we returned after a couple of weeks in Paris, returned to South Africa, I sold my manufacturing business, we informed our families. Oh, difficult conversation, won't go there. Um, and, and we packed our bags and we decided to promptly move to the UK. So that was very advantageous or a good thing for me because while living in the UK, I discovered this thing called coaching. Now, coaching in those days is not like it is today. Today, it's almost like there are lots of coaches. Every second or third person has some kind of 
form of coaching in their title or in what they do. In those days, there's no coaches around. It's this newish thing. In fact, when I discovered coaching, I, you know, like a good wife, I set my husband down. I'm like, oh, I've got good news. I found coaching. I'm going to train. I'm going to use our savings and train as a coach. Guess what he said? He said, please, Elise, for once in your life, just do something normal. Become an accountant. <laughs> Become an accountant. I love accountants. I absolutely love them. I would have been a bad one. That's why I have so much respect for accountants. Anyway, so he's, he's um, apologised to me since, which is good. So regardless of what he said, I soldiered on. I trained as a life coach in the UK, then trained as a business coach in the US. And, oh my goodness, it's been the best decision I've ever made. So I've spent the last decade, more than a decade now, working with, coaching some of the world's most successful people. And I've been really, really fortunate in the clients that I've been able to work with. And so I've coached people from all different industries, all the way from, through from students to CEOs and board members and all, everyone in between. And I've had um, the privilege of working with people who live in three continents, which gives me a really good handle on kind of the global market and all different industries. And I'd actually like to tell you a story about two of my clients. Is that okay? I'm going to skip a really important part of my story. I'll just ask if you want to hear that bit, and then I'll tell you the story. Do you want to hear the bit between come, leaving the UK and coming to Australia? Can I skip it? Do you want to hear it? Let's hear it. Okay. So, I train as a life coach and a business coach, right? Start my business in the UK. Fall pregnant, have a baby. Two o'clock in the afternoon, I give birth to my baby in London. The next morning, 11 o'clock, my husband comes and he comes to get me and, my, and, then, and our baby from the hospital. And as I get into the car, it's an, one, another one of those conversations where I go, hey, we absolutely cannot raise this child in London. We have to move straight away. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband, knowing better than to argue with someone who's just given birth, said yes. <laughs> and so seven months later, we arrived in Rockhampton. Straight London, Rockhampton. The way in which we chose Rockhampton is this. So, first thing, everyone we knew in Australia, uh, in the UK who were Australian, wanted to come home. So we're like, if they want to come home, it must be great. Because <laughs> we'd never been to Australia. So I arrive back home on the morning after giving birth to my baby, and I hop onto the internet and I register my husband's resume with a recruitment agent in Melbourne. And they come back straight away with a list of 20 places where we could go. And not having been to Australia before, picture this. So it's my husband, myself, my one day old baby, and a huge map of Australia on our lounge room floor, trying to, and this list, trying to figure out where to go. So we're having this conversation, where will we go? You know, yeah. all, we, all we knew is we wanted to be near the ocean, which is pretty easy in Australia, because there's lots of near the ocean places. And so we um, trying to have this conversation, figure out what shall we do, where will we go? And the next thing, an email comes through. And the email says there's an opportunity for you to come to Rockhampton straight away. Because someone who was meant to take up that position can't for personal reasons. So what do you do when you're living in London and you're about to make a life-changing decision about a place, going to a place that you've never been? What do you do? No, you Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are, right? Pick the baby up and move over to the computer. And we Google Rockhampton. Who's Googled Rockhampton? Yeah, so it says Rockhampton, the lifestyle city. My husband and I look at each other. We go, yeah, we're in the market for a lifestyle. <laughs> we'll go there. <laughs> So seven months later, we arrived, four suitcases, a stroller for our new life in Rockhampton. And seriously, that was eight years ago, and we just love it here. So we lived in Rockhampton for three and a half years. Then, you know, our dream, live close to the ocean, then move to Yapoon. 
where we live now, close to the ocean. And it, we just love central Queensland. We've become Australian citizens and I'm really committed to this region and to this country. And I absolutely think Australian people are the best people in the world. And I say that I'm qualified. I've traveled a lot. I'm qualified to say that. So, okay, back to, I've had the privilege of now working with some of the most amazing people all across the world. And I'd like to tell you a story about two of those people. Is that okay? Is everyone happy to think another story? Okay. Excellent. So, come to Australia with four suitcases, a stroller, and a baby. We take three months to settle in, and I register my coaching business here. And I get my very first corporate coaching contract. And I get to work with two ladies. So, where's my clicker? So I get to work with two ladies. I call them Jane and Jill. You can see their likeness, yeah? Good. It's a photograph. Not their real names, not their real pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's a surprise. Um, so I work with these two ladies. I get to work with these two ladies. They both work for the same corporate organisation. They're both kind of at middle management level. I get to work with them over the same period of time. So not in the same sessions, but over the same period of time. So I start my sessions with Jane and Jill, and something struck me about Jane and Jill. Everything about their lives seemed almost identical. So I'll just give you, I'll paint the picture. So number one, they're both attractive ladies in their mid-30s. They both had almost identical educational backgrounds. So both uni graduates, same degree. They worked at the same middle management level in this organization. They reported to the same guy, and they had similar team sizes reporting to them. And what really struck me is that the similarities between them did, did, were far-reaching. Even outside of work, their lives were almost identical. So they were both married. They both had the same age little kids, and they even lived in the same neighborhood. That's weird, right? So many similarities. But when I was looking at them, this is what I couldn't figure out. Even though everything around their lives were almost identical, there was one startling difference. Jane was thriving while Jill was struggling to survive. Jane was thriving. She would come to work happy. She would go home happy. She was good in her relationships with her husband and her children. She had great rapport with her team. She was up for promotion while I was coaching her. She got the promotion. She was doing well financially. Well, Jill was struggling. She was struggling, arguing at home, arguing at work, struggling financially, struggling within herself. And I looked at them and I'm like, oh my goodness. Everything in and around these ladies' lives are almost identical. Why are they not performing to the same standard? And I asked myself this question. Why are some people more successful than others? Have you ever asked that question? Who's asked the question, why are some people who are not as smart as you, not as talented as you, happier than you, making more money than you, and making, doing better than you? What is with that? <laughs> so infuriating, right? So I was looking at Jane and Jill and I'm asking this question and I discovered the answer and I'm going to share that piece of the puzzle with you very soon. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to share that with you very, very soon. But before I share that with you, I'll just finish my story. So I, I take this, this piece, this thing that I discover from Jane and Jill and I, and I delve deeply into what it means to be successful and I delve deeply, I research, I read, I listen, I learn, I do everything I can to get a really strong grasp, big, strong, firm understanding of what it means to be successful and how to get there. What's the easiest way to be successful? And then I created what I now call my coaching programs and started to deliver them more consistently. And then we created these amazing results for my clients to the point where I was often astounded at what my clients could achieve with this knowledge. And then 
One morning I wake up and I go, ha, huh, I'm doing what I set out to do. I am helping people succeed. I'm helping people go from here to here. But hey, guess what? On a very small scale, I cannot help more people than I can meet with in a week. And so that was a turning point for me because that triggered something. And it made me start to dream a dream for my life. I dreamt of a world where people come to work, contribute, and love what they do. I dreamt of a world where everyone knew what their effortless brilliance was, and they could bring it, and they could be effortlessly brilliant, and everyone could be fulfilled and satisfied by doing what they loved. I dreamt of a world where people could get along and work together. And not only did I want to contribute to that world, I want my children to grow up in that world. And so I was faced with a problem, because here's the thing. I am a mother of two little girls. I'm the wife of a husband who works full time. I'm a boss. I lead a team. I run a business. I'm a daughter. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. I have all these different hats that I wear and I'm only one person, and I'm limited by time and my energy, and I can only achieve so much. And so if I really wanted to create or contribute to this better world, I needed a different vehicle, right, than my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I asked myself the question, what do people do? What do people do? I know, they read. Excellent. So I set out to write a book. And so I write this book called, and there it is, The Naked Truth About You, Your Path to an Extraordinary Life Revealed. Took about a year to find that title. And now I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, <laughs> so because I wanted to help a lot of people, I wrote a manual for living an extraordinary life. And it took two years. I pour my heart and soul into this book. And I get published internationally, and then they refuse to publish my book in color. And I'm like, I will self-publish my book in color. And I publish it as well. And I have this color version and this other version. And again, it's all good. Two years later, my husband is over it, over the book completely. And we decide, OK, what's a good, you've got to do a launch party. Everyone says, you've got to do a launch party. You've got to do a launch party. So I do a launch party. Everyone comes, and this lady comes over to me, and she says, Elise, I would love to know what's in your book, but I just don't read. <laughs> At the launch party of my book, you come and you don't read? Oh, my God, that was a blow. And so I just, I'm like, okay, I recover from that little setback. I, okay, obviously I didn't answer that question correctly the first time. What do most people do? What do you think? What is the answer that I came up with? YouTube. They watch TV is the one that I got. YouTube's close. Who said YouTube? Excellent. Yeah, well, close enough. Right, so they watch video. So that's what I did. I, I set out to create this other program based on the book called Unleash the Power of Your Extraordinary Life, video, DVD series. And then I said about marketing this book. And in the marketing efforts, nice things happened to me. So I got the opportunity to uh, be on Oprah's life class with Anthony Robbins. I don't know, Oprah's not as well known as she used to be. But anyway, I got that little opportunity. And a lot of other online media, print media, radio, international marketing opportunities. But let me ensure you, I can relate to what Muhammad Ali said about work and preparation. I run on the road long before I dance under the lights. I run on the road long before I dance under the lights. Who feels like that sometimes? Yeah. There's a lot of road running. A lot. And so what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is really share with you what I've learned in running on the road and what I've discovered about what it takes to be successful. And I'm, I'm encouraged to know that you've heard some of what I'm going to say yesterday. 
So please know that what you've learned so far in this conference is spot on. So if I'm repeating what was said yesterday in some of what I say, that's good, right? That gives you, I need to definitely do this. Got it? Excellent. So we're going to spend our time together to embark, board, uh, embark on a journey. We're going to board the fast train of change. Now, why did I call it the fast train of change? Because if you want to create success beyond what you've achieved so far, you've got to go somewhere where you haven't been. Do you agree with that? And do you think if you have to go from here to here, somewhere where you've never been, success that you have not yet achieved, do you think that you need to grow from that point to this point as a person? Now, guess what? You cannot grow and stay the same. You cannot grow and stay the same. And so if you just make the decision to embark the fast train of change, everything else becomes easier. It's when you resist that embarkation, boarding that train, embarking on this journey, that things become really challenging. So I want to show you how you can effortlessly, smoothly go from where you are into, a fort into your fortified future success. How you can create a life free from the things that you actually do not want and can make happen the things that you do. And we're going to do that in six steps. And there they are. Number one, we're going to choose the right fast train of change for you. Number two, we're going to board the train. Number three, you're going to take the lead and back yourself. We're going to follow a map embrace the stops and stations along the way and know the driver. Everyone happy with that? Yeah? Is everyone who is ready to go on a journey of discovery with me? Journey of discovery. Perfect. Ooh, that says choose the right fast train of change for you. So imagine you're standing at the station and looking at that scene. That is actually 27 fast trains. A picture of 27 fast trains. How will you know which one to get on, to board? How will you know? Any ideas? How will you pick your fast train? Do you know? One suits your journey. Pardon? One suits your journey. Absolutely. And how will you know which one suits your journey? You're following your map. You're following your map? Absolutely. But what do you need to know before you can board the train? Where you're going, yeah? Where you are going. So, what if you boarded the train that went to Melbourne, but you actually wanted to go to Sydney? What would you, how would that journey be along the way? You would get a nice nagging feeling that something's not right. It's taking longer than expected. And then you get, you, you get out and you're like, oh, this isn't where I want it to be. Do you know what? That sounds really bizarre. People do it every single day. Every single day. They try and change stations, stations change, change stations along the way, which is a good idea. But the better idea is to know where you're going before you start. So number one thing, all successful people have a clear sense of direction and they know the destination. Stephen Covey said it this way, begin with the end in mind. Okay, so we're going to give yourselves a score on a scale of 1 to 10, write down your clarity about your destination. What that means practically is how clearly do you know what your goals are? How, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being you own your goal, you're able to define it, you can tell it to anyone, you know exactly what it is, you know you've written it out and you look at it every day. Give yourself a 10 if you're like that. Who needs more time to give themselves a score? No? Have you given, have you written it down? Okay, who got a 10? Good on you. Well done. Who got between five and seven? Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Seven and nine, between seven and nine. Excellent, who got below five? Oh, okay, I'll, what, what I'm about to say, especially for you. So here are the reasons why people find it difficult to set their goals. And these reasons might even apply to all of you if you don't have a 10. So the number one thing is, 
Your sub most people, human nature, is to subconsciously try and avoid what you don't want instead of creating what you do. So we go about life trying to avoid failing instead of thinking, what do I need to do to succeed? Subconsciously, we go about our work avoiding criticism instead of saying, what can I do to really, really nail this? Does that make sense? Does that kind of relate to you all? Do you have a sense that that would be true? So I want to, you to be aware of it. Awareness equals control. And if you catch yourself, go, oh, I'm trying to avoid failing instead of going towards succeeding. And then say, okay, what's my goal? Commit to success. The second reason why people find it difficult to set goals is this. They don't know what the perfect goal is. So if you're the kind of person who needs to set the perfect goal, here's a bit of the experience you'll probably be having. So you'll be going round and round in your head, thinking, 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 and that thinking causes you to feel overwhelmed. And then after a while, you kind of feel like you're lost. Has anyone had that experience? Yeah. So let me ensure you, reassure you, there is no such thing as the perfect goal. Absolutely everything has good and bad. There is, you cannot choose a thing that has no bad. Everything is an equal mixture of good and bad. The only goal, the bad thing is this. If you don't set a goal, this is what's going to happen to you. Uh, Jim Rohn said, if you don't design your own life plan, chances are you'll fall into someone else's plan. And guess what they have planned for you? Not much. Not much. So I don't want that to happen to anyone in this room. So what do you need to do? You need to set a goal. And do you know how to set a goal? It's as simple as saying, what do I want? What do I want? So if you want more information on how to set goals, you can email my assistant at that email address, and I'll send you a goal-setting document that really outlines exactly what it is that you need to do. OK, step two. So we know which train to board because we know where we are going. OK. Step two, board your train. Grab your bag, let's go. What do you do to board the train? You make a decision. An unwavering, committed decision to pursue your goal. If you are 99% committed to something, that is incredibly difficult. If you're 100% committed, it becomes easy. Why? Because it eliminates the voice in the back of your mind constantly telling you or questioning what you're doing. When you eliminate the own questioning voice that goes, oh, I'm not, I don't really want to be doing this. I'm not really committed to this. I'm not really going after my goal. If you eliminate that voice and you go for what you want, the road becomes much easier and the journey becomes much smoother. And so you board your train by making a decision. So you have a future, regardless of your age or your situation, you have a future. And because you have a future, anything is possible. What you need to do to ensure that you use your future to create success is make an unwavering, committed decision to pursue the destination you've defined. And if you can't make that decision today, when will you make it? Because time's ticking. Your future is unfolding as time progresses. Today, now, is the very best time to make that decision. Who is happy to make that decision right now? What? Everyone! <laughs> Who's not happy to make the decision? Who's like, oh, I'll get to that later? Is there anyone who would like to wait? Okay, so who is not happy? to make a decision right now to commit to the destination that you've defined. Okay, we can talk about that later. So, once you've defined your destination, you've made the decision to board your train, you need to do this. You need to be the superhero of your own life. Tanya spoke about the leadership program. Let me let me say something that I, you might or might not have heard before. You are a leader. Can you point to yourself and say, I am a leader? One, two, three. Well, I am a leader. I am a leader. Point to your neighbor and say, you are a leader. 
You're a leader. You are a leader. Do you know who you have to lead first? Sometimes the hardest person to lead? Yourself. Yourself. You have to know that you're a leader of yourself. And unless you can lead and back yourself, guess what? Other people won't follow you either. You go first. And from this day forward, you need to know that you're the leader of yourself. You are the leader of yourself. So just as when I told my husband that I'm going to become a coach, and he's like, no, <laughs> accounting. That's, you might find that in your life, when you tell people about your dreams and goals, they might not back you. In fact, they might say, that's not a good idea. They might even say, I don't think you can do that. What should you do in response? Back yourself and lead yourself. Because here's the reality, guys. There is really no one exactly like you. In this entire world, there is no one exactly like you. No one sees things exactly the way you see them. No one feels about things exactly the way you feel. Your talents, your dreams, your goals is part of a universal supply, a balance of supply and demand. And if you don't pursue your goal, if you're not the leader of yourself, if you don't back your own destination, chances are no one else will do what you were meant to do. Your life is actually really, really important. It's not random, it's no randomness. Your life is actually really important and your goal is really important. And you need to be the leader of your own goal. Which brings us to step four, which is who said follow a map early? Excellent. So if we have to come from here, where we are now, to success that we haven't achieved yet, destination, goal, is it going to be easier if we have a map? Yes? So that's a map of Australia, but that's not, I'm sure your goal is not to really travel Australia. Might be. Really cool, I think so. So we need to follow a map. And what I mean by map is this. A massive action plan. Because the magic happens when you take action. The magic happens in execution. The magic happens in doing something every day that will take you closer to your goal. So that's what you need to do. You need to define your own map, your massive action plan. Your own map. So. That's what we need, because without a plan, chances are there'll be no success. And John Maxwell said that success is found in your daily routine. So that map, that action plan, needs to be incorporated into your daily routine. Why? Because you become great when you define what you want and work towards it every day. So who here feels like they're absolutely in control of their days? Excellent. So most people go through life not controlling their time. Most people go through life responding to what the environment throws at them instead of planning their day and following their plan. So here's the fast track from where you are to where you want to go. The fast track is make a plan and create a daily routine that reflects that plan and follow your plan. Because you'll be doing stuff anyway. For the next 10 years, you're going to go through every day doing something, doing something, doing something, doing something. Wouldn't it be better if you arrived at the end of 10 years where you want to be, as opposed to going back and saying, wow, I was busy. Hey, but I didn't achieve much. That's not good. You don't want to look back on your life going, whoa, I was busy. Not sure exactly what I achieved. And the only, way into which into the only way you can avoid that situation is to make a plan and follow your plan. So here's how you make a plan. Simply by asking yourself the question, what do I need to do to achieve my goal? What do I need to do to achieve my goal? And your mind is brilliant. It's been trained to respond to questions by giving an answer. So you ask yourself the question with a pen in your hand and you just write down what your mind tells you to do. And then you take that list, you prioritize it, 
And then you take your schedule and you plan your daily routine around your action plan as opposed to around what everyone else has planned for you, which is not much. So, we're on the fast train, we've boarded the fast train by making a decision, we know where we're going, we're taking the lead and backing ourselves. Guess what? Not everything's going to go according to plan. Not everything will go according to plan. In fact, there has not been a successful person in the entire history of the world who hasn't faced setbacks, problems, obstacles, barriers and detours. So if you're in a setback or problem or obstacle or detour right now, guess what? You're in great company. You're in great company. You're on your way towards success. So embrace the station. So there are really two reasons why we have to go through setbacks and problems. Who's like me who, when you understand why, it actually helps you to just get over it? When you have no idea why, you just don't want to do it. Yeah? So for those why people, let me tell you. The reason why you have to go through setbacks, problems, detours, barriers, is because it makes you strong. When you go to the gym, now I said before, I'm not that strong, but I'm probably strong for a girl. So when you go to the gym and you use weights, it determines the size of your muscle, yes? So I use a three kilogram weight, not very heavy at all. And so, <laughs> you can see the size of my muscle is not that great. But if I were to use 30 kilogram weights, what would happen? <laughs> after, after I recover, <laughs> I'll, get a, I'll have like n strong muscles, right? Now, problems are the weight of life. So when you encounter a problem, what you have to do is you have to know that that problem is there to do two things. Number one thing, it's there to make you strong on the inside of you. It is the weight of life. So as you encounter a problem, you want to engage in it, you want to wrestle it, you want to find a way around it or over it or under it, you want to keep your eye on the goal, but you want to smash that barrier. Yes? Don't be surprised that you're facing a barrier, don't go in the corner and cry and say, oh, woe is me, I have a problem. Problems are a sign of life. The only people who don't have problems are dead people. Well, they have a big problem. <laughs> but not in the same way as we're referring to problems here. So really, when you are facing a problem, that's excellent. It's there to make you strong. And your response to that problem needs to be, I can get through this. I will get over it. I am keeping my eye on the goal and I am smashing this. And I will become strong on the inside. Because when you overcome problem after problem after problem, what happens? You become unstoppable. And that is what every successful person is. They have courage and determination. So that was, that's what you need along the way, courage and determination, so that you can smash and overcome your problems. The second reason why these barriers and problems exist is to encourage you to learn the skills that you need to become a successful person. Because there are some things that you're going to need to learn. I am assuming that because you're at uni, you are masters at learning new things. Am I right? So learning new skills should be really easy for you. So know two things. When you're facing anything that feels like this is stopping you or this is difficult, know two things. Number one, it's there to make you strong. Number two, it should activate the master of learning on the inside of you. And really, I found that there are only three skills that we need to learn. Number one, all the skills that make us absolutely competent in whatever thing we choose to do. So if you're an accountant, you have to learn the skills of becoming a brilliant accountant. If you are a nutritionist, you want to know everything there is to know about nutrition. If you're a psychologist, you want to know everything there is to know about helping people overcome their challenges. And so regardless of what it is that you're, you're studying, regardless of your field, you want to be the best at it. And secondly, Two other things, the ability to move yourself even when you're feeling doubtful or fearful or insecure and the ability to move other people to say yes. Three things, competence, the ability to move yourself and the ability to help others, to move others, to influence others.
Now, we've come to our last step. We're on the train of change. We know where we're going. We've decided to board. We're backing ourselves. We're smashing our barriers. What's the last thing we need to do? Know who the driver is. Who's the driver of your train? I want to suggest that that driver should be you. <laughs> that driver should be you. So, let's go back to the story of Jane and Jill. What really is the difference between people who succeed and people who struggle? What is the magic difference that makes some people stand out and other people not so much? Attitude. Attitude. That's very close. Self-belief, self very close. Any other ideas? Clear goals, Clear goals and direction. Yes, that's part of it. You've all, what, all, you've all answered partly right. Here's the answer. The difference between people who succeed and thrive and people who struggle is what goes on on the inside of that person. What goes on on the inside of that person? So what's the most important question to ask? What is on the inside of us that really, really determines how well we'll go? And here's what is on the inside. You have three internal drivers. You have a mind, you have a body, and you have emotions. And really your success is a direct result of your mental, physical, and emotional capacity. Mental, physical, and emotional capacity. So I'd like to know a two-minute life hack that will help you maximize your mental and physical and emotional energy and capacity every day. I'm going to show you. OK, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you not the science. I'm just going to give you the practice. You know how I say John Maxwell says, your success is found in your daily routine? I cannot, cannot emphasize that enough. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you the practical thing that takes two minutes to do every day that you have to please incorporate in your daily routine. Is everyone happy with that? Do you want to see what it is? Fold your tables away, put your books away, because we have to stand for this one. Kind of spread out. You good? Okay. okay, so let's start with the body. What can you do to maximize your physical energy? So just a quick, quick thing. When you maximize your mental energy and capacity and you maximize your physical energy and capacity, that is the way in which you maximize your emotional capacity. So your emotions are a chemical reaction to your thinking and your emotions are a chemical reaction to your posture. Do I need to say that again? Your emotions respond to your thinking and your posture. It is really as simple as that. It's really as simple as that. So how you are feeling drives your behavior and your behavior creates results. So what we really want to do is we want to maximize how powerful you feel on the inside of you, how determined you are, how courageous you are, your attitude, your self-belief. That's what we want to maximize. And in two minutes every morning, you're able to do this. So firstly, we need to change our posture to the posture of someone who is a winner. That's it. We need to change your posture to the posture of someone who's a winner. And there's heaps of research. If you uh, YouTube Amy Cuddy, there's heaps of research on how when you change your posture for two minutes, it completely changes your hormones, which completely changes how you feel. And you can be feel powerful by just standing like you are powerful. Yes? The second part that we're going to add to doing the right posture, and I'll show you what the posture is in a moment, the second part that we're going to add to this is telling your mind what to do. Telling your mind who you are. Because what's been happening to you is everyone around you, the TV, your parents, your peers, they've all been telling you who to be. And I think that they don't have your best interest at heart. I think you have your best interest at heart. And therefore, when you tell your own mind what to do, you're actually helping yourself be feel powerful, feel the emotions that will drive the behavior that will take you from where you are to where you need to be. 
Did I explain that well? Can you all understand what I'm saying? So we're going to do that by two things. Number one, a power statement, and number two, a power pose. And we're going to combine the two. So I've taken the liberty of creating a power statement, and what I'm asking you to do is to read it with me. So we're all going to read it off the screen. And secondly, while we read it off the screen, not like this. <laughs> not like you don't really mean it. We're going to say it like you mean it, because you have to tell your brain got to tell your brain what to think. We're going to say it like you mean it, and we're going to stand like someone who is a champion. Now, there are two options. You can stand like this, or you can stand like this. <laughs> Come on, someone do this. Okay, everyone in your posture, power pose. That is called a power pose. So we're going to have arms up, Interestingly, even people who have never seen, like if they're congenitally blind and they win a race, they stand like this. It's deeply ingrained into our um, humanity. Okay, so here we go. Two minutes, stand in your power pose and say it like you mean it. This is my day. This is my time. This is my moment. My life counts today. My life counts tomorrow. I am a success every day and in every way. Today, nothing can stand in my way. I have the energy, drive, determination and patience to get the job done. I set goals and I achieve them. I have a big dreams and I fulfill them. I can achieve anything I choose. Nothing can keep me from being my best and achieving success. I know that proper preparation is the hallmark of victors and I always prepare like a successful person. I am focused. My goals remain my priority and I always remain on course. I believe that good things will come my way and follow me. I am an extraordinary person and will be victorious. I am unstoppable and I know that persistence and the strength of my will will lead me to success, that victory of my I take persistence seriously and make it part of my daily life. If I meet a barrier, I will find a way through, over or around it. I will be successful. I have to be successful. I will stay on course until my goal is reached. I choose to feel good and happy today and every day. I believe that I have the power to choose the way I feel today and every day. This is the strength of mine and I harness every day on my journey to success. No one can stand in my way or set me off course. My goals are clearly defined and they draw me closer every day. I know that success is the progressive realization of a dream or goal and that I am moving closer to that every day. I always take action to my time. Today is my day. Today, I will succeed in many ways. Woo! Yay! Give each other a high five yourself. Very good. Hey, this is my final thought. This is my hope for you. Let others lead small lives, but not you. Let others cry over small hurts, but not you. Let others leave their future in someone else's hands, but not you. It is my sincere desire that each and every one of you will bring your effortless brilliance to the world, back yourself, lead yourself, and be determined to succeed. Thank you. No, thank you.